R2R DAX have a reputation for not measuring all that well, and that is generally speaking true. R2R DAX are harder to make accurate in practice than Delta Sigma DAX, and they require more expensive physical design components, which is why most R2R DAX are typically pretty expensive. But even the really high-end options often only get around minus 100 dB total harmonic distortion and noise performance. Hollow Audio, though, has been a unique player in the DAC market, with their R2R DACs being the most accurate ones available and by a fairly large margin, a good 20 dB or so ahead of the competition in some cases. They did release the Spring 3, which is a little bit more attainable than their extremely expensive flagship DAC, the May, but now they have released the Cyan 2, a far more compact and aggressively priced option, but is it any good? Well, let's see. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com, and if you like content like this and want to help support it, it's all made possible by Headphones.com. So, next time you're looking to buy a new pair of headphones, a DAC, or an amp, consider Headphones.com for your next audio purchase, and buy with confidence thanks to their 365-day return policy. The Cyan 2 is far more compact than both the May and Spring 3, coming in a much more desk-friendly form factor that is probably going to work quite a bit better for most headphone users. It has a brushed black aluminium chassis with copper orange side plates, and overall the build quality externally does feel really nice. What you might notice is missing, however, is the presence of any buttons or display on the front, instead finding a series of LED indicators to show the current sample rate and inputs, and that's where the main drawback of this product is. Unlike the May or the Spring 3, which both have a menu to decide which input you want to use, the Cyan 2 does everything automatically, and this generally works quite well. For AES, SPDIF, and I2S, when one input stops playing and another starts, it pretty much flawlessly switches over to the active input. But if you're using USB for one of your sources, it does tend to lock the input to that source. So if one of the devices you are wanting to use to feed this DAC is USB, like a PC, be aware that for input switching, you might actually have to physically disconnect the cable in order for it to then switch over to the, say, SPDIF input. Internally is where things look even prettier, though. A pretty substantial linear power supply with an O-type transformer, quite a bit of filtering and regulation just off to the side, a USB input daughter board which also features full galvanic isolation, meaning you can hook this up directly to even a beefy gaming PC and absolutely no USB noise can get through to interfere with or degrade the performance of the DAC itself, a discrete, fairly beefy output stage just above the main area of interest, the R2R ladder. This is the exact same R2R ladder that you'll find in the Topping Centaurus, as Hollow Audio is actually selling the DAC modules to Topping for that product. Though, for a little bit of information as to why you might want to consider getting a Cyan 2 over a Centaurus, even though they're using the same DAC module and the Cyan 2 is about $300 more expensive, do go and watch our Centaurus review video, as there are a few things that you'll probably want to be aware of. This has the main R2R ladder for PCM audio, but it also has a separate discrete 1-bit DSD converter, so you can also feed the Cyan 2 DSD files, and it'll convert them natively without needing to apply any DSP or convert back to PCM. There's also some pretty interesting design aspects if you look closely, like the fact that the traces between the individual elements are shaped so that each one ends up the exact same length overall. That was pretty interesting to see. Hollow's internals have always been really nice, and whilst the Cyan 2 isn't as over the top as the May, it is still a gorgeous looking device. So, two DACs in one box, one for PCM and one for DSD, but how much performance are you actually sacrificing, given as this is not just physically smaller, but nearly a quarter of the price of Hollow's flagship DAC, the May? Well, the Cyan 2, just in pure total harmonic distortion and noise, still gets around minus 110 dB, which puts it above just about all other R2R DACs on the market besides Hollow's own Spring 3 or May. The May gets about 118 dB, so you're losing about 8 dB of performance just in this particular test, so something but this is still getting better results than even insanely expensive options like the Rockner Wave Dream Signature Balanced or the Denifrips Terminator Plus. You also get about 116 dB when converting DSD on the 1-bit converter, and the Cyan 2 supports up to PCM 1.536 MHz and DSD1024 input. Other areas like linearity and crosstalk are also pretty excellent, with crosstalk remaining around minus 145 dB, and jitter or clocking performance is also a particularly impressive area, since this DAC isn't doing any asynchronous resampling jitter correction like many other DACs do, and it's still getting effectively picture-perfect jitter performance. One particularly important aspect from the Hollow May that you don't get on the Cyan 2 is the PLL or phase-locked loop. The May had an extraordinarily effective PLL system, which basically meant that regardless 
regardless of what you fed it with, you got basically perfect jitter performance. The Cyan 2 doesn't have that PLL, and so if you connect to DDC or anything other than USB, it's actually running directly off the clock source that you are feeding to it. And this means that the performance of the digital source device is going to impact the performance of the DAC. Any jitter present on that connection is just fed through, so a better DDC or a better streamer is going to be quite important. But given as this has galvanic isolation on the USB and the internal clocking performance just using USB is already basically perfect, you kind of should just be using USB anyway. If you would like to see full measurements of the HoloCyan 2, those are available at the Audiophiles section of headphones.com linked in the description. And given as a lot of people that are considering buying a Cyan 2 are also probably going to be looking at buying the Topping Centaurus because it's got the same DAC module in it but it's a fair bit cheaper, what I did was I actually used the same DAC module transplanted into both DACs to measure and compare the difference just between the two products. So that means that there's absolutely no unit variation whatsoever in terms of the R2R ladder itself at play, because they're both using the same R2R ladder. It's just a completely fair test of the Cyan 2 as a product and the Centaurus as a product. And for the most part, the short summary is that when they're working properly, the two are very similar, both subjectively and in objective performance. But when they're working properly is the key point there. Again, go and watch the Centaurus video because that explains some of the issues that the Centaurus has when you're using it in non-oversampling mode, when you feed it external high sample rate input, or when you set the internal oversampling to too high a rate. It starts encountering some pretty significant performance degradation there, whereas the Cyan 2 does not. And speaking of sample rates, the Cyan 2 is a NOS or non-oversampling only DAC. It does not have any option for internal oversampling, it is just taking the incoming PCM audio data that you feed it and converting those samples exactly as they are with no DSP whatsoever. Some people really do like the sound of NOS. It has a notably warmer, denser sound to it, which does really appeal to some people, and I really like the sound of NOS sometimes, but I wouldn't want to have it as the only thing in which my DAC can run. And the lack of internal oversampling means if you do want oversampling, which is technically speaking the correct way to do things since NOS does cause some notable upper treble roll-off, then you need to do it with an external tool. So, much like the Hollow Spring 3, the sound that you're going to get out of the Cyan 2 is going to very heavily depend on whether you run this as a plug-and-play device in NOS, or whether you use some sort of external tool or software to do oversampling and feed this a higher sample rate. Tools like Fubar, Rune, and Audivana are all pretty easy to do this in, so for most people it's not going to be a problem, but if you are exclusively using streaming services, many of them won't have a built-in option for that. With oversampling being used, the frequency response is basically flat, but with NOS you'll get about a 3 dB roll-off by 20 kHz. So the sound of this DAC is going to very significantly depend on whether you run it NOS or with oversampling, and I would strongly recommend trying using oversampling because, particularly with HQ Player set up correctly for this DAC, it really does elevate the performance of this product quite substantially. The overall objective performance of the Cyan 2 is fantastic for an R2R DAC, and Holo has managed to beat basically all of the other R2R products on the market in objective performance, whilst cutting the price down to around a quarter of their flagship offering. But what about subjective results? Well, they were pretty great too. Now, I'm very familiar with the sound of the Hollow May because that's been my reference stack in my speaker system for quite a long time now, and the Cyan 2 has a lot of the same core character that the May does. When comparing the Cyan 2 to other DACs with external oversampling to avoid any outright frequency response differences, the Cyan 2 is knocking on the door in terms of resolution of options like the Ferrum Wandler. It's got a much more neutral and overall technically capable sound than what a number of other R2R options such as the Hyperman EF400 have, and that's also reflected by the quite substantially better objective performance. The real standout aspect of the sound for me though, and one of the reasons why I've loved the May for so long, is the spatial presentation. The Cyan 2 has a real tactility to placement of elements within its stage that is quite frankly just outright better than any other product even close to this price point that I can think of. Even when comparing to the Ferrum Wandler, the Wandler does have a bigger, slightly airier soundstage to it, but the Cyan 2 had a more tangible and almost visceral placement within the stage. The depth of different elements and the perceived distance in front of you is extremely convincing on both headphones and speakers, and it's got much less of a wall of sound effect than even many DACs at far higher prices than this. When you swap to using the Cyan 2 plug and play, just running it NOS with no external oversampling whatsoever, which is probably how most people are going to use it, it is noticeably more relaxed and warm sounding, which is kind of to be expected. NOS means that you do have a little bit of upper treble roll off, so some of the energy of those higher frequency transients is a little bit more subdued. 
and overall perceived resolution does take a little bit of a hit as well. But I do sometimes find myself preferring to listen in NOS. It can be not just a benefit to, but sometimes outright preferable, particularly for more laid back music. I just kind of wish that NOS was an option on this like it is on something like the Lave Harmony, not the only option. When I'm listening to more fast-paced, punchy electronic music or more percussion-heavy jazz, for example, like Manu Catch's Keep On Trippin', then oversampling all the way. NOS doesn't really work all that well for it because it is just a little bit too relaxed and laid back. And in fact, comparing the Cyan 2 in NOS to the Eversolo DAC-Z8, which does have internal oversampling, the DAC-Z8 was a more incisive and I'd say overall better end result. But this isn't a limitation of the hardware, and when running the Cyan 2 with the upsampling software HQ Player, which I've put my recommended settings for the Cyan 2 in the description if you wanted to try it, then the Cyan 2 leaps over the DAC-Z8 and was an outright better sounding DAC in basically every single way. The Cyan 2 staged bigger, it had more realistic depth and placement within the stage, and detail retrieval between the two was similar, but the Cyan 2 did edge ahead in terms of timbre, it's got just a little bit more body to it, and the overall realism of both pretty much any vocal or instrument that I was playing was just more convincing on the Cyan 2. This had a more realistic sounding result once you were comparing the two with oversampling, and there just wasn't at that point really anything that I could think of or hear that the Z8 was doing better than the Cyan 2. The Lave Harmony is also one worth comparing to, since that's a fairly hot topic R2R DAC at the moment, and I think where I ended up with the comparison here was honestly a fairly similar story. If you are willing to use external oversampling, or if you're comparing the two both in NOS, then I think that for most people, the Cyan 2 is going to be the better choice. The Harmony is a slightly more coloured, inherently warm presentation, and that contrast persists even when running the same oversampled music into both DACs. Whereas the Cyan 2 sounded like it was imparting less of its own character onto the music. It had a more transparent sound. It's closer to neutral without going the other way and becoming bright or aggressive. And it just perfectly rides the line between being able to provide quick, snappy and incisive treble without getting bright, aggressive or in your face about it. And overall the Cyan 2 just came across a touch more resolving than the Harmony. If you are not willing to use external oversampling though, and you just want to use a DAC plug and play, then the Harmony was definitely able to get a better sounding result, mostly by nature of it having internal oversampling as an option, though it can be used NOS as well. So between the Cyan 2 and the Harmony, it's kind of a question of convenience and not having to use another piece of software with the Harmony versus potentially higher performance with the Cyan 2 if you are willing to use external software. Versus the Hollow May though, well, it definitely, as mentioned, shares a lot of the core character in terms of sound as the May, but the May is a notable step up. The May is more detailed, slightly more dynamic and punchy, and able to handle busier music passages with a clearer separation between elements. And from an objective standpoint, the May does get better distortion performance, better linearity, lower crosstalk thanks to the dual mono design, and some nice design features like an insanely effective PLL. But it is four times the cost, and physically, massive. This is not a May in a smaller box, but this is a device with an incredibly high performance ceiling if you're willing to do a little bit of fussing about to get the most out of it. From a practical standpoint, the Cyan 2's build is great internally and externally, but the lack of manual input switching is going to be a deal breaker for some. The pricing and performance also puts it in prime position to be a great upgrade option for those coming from the 500 to 800 ish dollar range of DAX. But my main gripe when it comes to sound is just that if you don't like NOS, you have to be willing to at least turn on oversampling in your player. If you are willing and able to use external oversampling, then the Cyan 2 is quite happily throwing punches with and holding its own against many products several times its own price. But if you are not wanting to, you just want to use this plug and play and you don't want to use any extra tools, which is completely understandable, then it's going to come down to whether or not you like the sound of NOS. So overall, in terms of the sound quality that you can get out of this, the Cyan 2 is honestly exceptional. But even though I do feel it can sound better than almost any other DAC anywhere near its price point, it really is a question of whether you're willing to sacrifice some convenience to get there. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you've got any questions about the Cyan 2, oversampling, DACs, amps, headphones, or anything else at all, then come and say hey on the Headphones.com Discord server, or check out our newly revamped Headphones.com forum. Until next time, I'm Golden Sound, you're watching the Headphone Show by Headphones.com, and I will see you next time.